Good afternoon, students. Um, in this lesson, I'll be explaining the simple present tense. Uh, there are several things that we must uh, consider when uh, thinking about the simple present. The first use, the simple present is used for habits, right? For things that we do habitually. For example, he drinks tea at breakfast. She only eats fish. Those are things that we do every day. Habits are things that we do every single day. Every, every day we do those things. So, uh, also, like, is the same thing as repeated actions or events. For example, I go to work. Um, I have to catch the bus every morning. And something else that I want to mention here, that we use the simple present with phrases like every morning, every day, um, every month, and with adverbs of frequency. Adverbs of frequency. Adverbs of frequency. So the adverbs of frequency are always never, seldom, hardly, um, hardly ever, uh, sometimes, um, often, usually. With these words, we must use the simple present tense, right? For general truths or facts, today, um, um, the water freezes at zero degrees. That's something uh, that is a general truth. That's something that is going to happen. Uh, also, for instructions or direction, open the, uh, the packet and pour the content into hot water. When we give direction, when we give orders, we use also the simple present tense. Uh, yeah, so moving on to the, the simple present or every tense in English has three parts. Have the affirmative, the interrogative, and the negative. How do we make the affirmative? Okay, in the affirmative we have subjects. For example, I play... Uh, well, I study. I study every day. I study every day at 4 o'clock, for example. I study every day at 4 o'clock. That's the affirmative, right? The sentence is a positive sentence. And with you, with uh, they, with we... The verb does not change. We don't add anything to the verb. But if we pay attention over here, when we use he or she and it, we must add something to the verb. Normally we add s or we add es. Those are the things that we must add to the verb s or ES depending on the case. Over here, uh, depending on the case, of course, depending on the subject and depending on uh, the ending of the verb. For example, uh, if the verb finishes with Y, like in this case, Y, and before the Y, there is a consonant, like here, we have the verb ends in Y, but before the Y, we have a consonant. We have the consonant R. So when we have the Y, and before the Y, we have a consonant, we must change the Y into I and we must add ES to the verb when we use these verbs with she, 
he or it. I'm going to set an example here. He uh, tries he tries to study hard. He tries to study hard. Over here we have an, the example of the verb try. The verb try in its in its infinitive form is try. But when we want to use it in the simple present with the subject he, we must know that the verb needs to be conjugated. So we add es to the verb according to the rule. The rule is clear over here. The verb fly changes to flies and the verb cry changes to cries. Uh, there are of course some exceptions to this. Uh, the exceptions are here we have the verb play. Before the verb play we have a, a vowel. So when we have the Y and before the Y is a vowel, then we do not need to change uh, the, the, the Y. We just add the S. An example of that is Carla, Carla plays um, video games. Carla plays video games. So this is an example. Plays. The verb does not, the Y does not change into I because uh, there is a vowel before the Y. Boom. But when um, there's a consonant before, then we must change the y the y into i then we must add es this rule i think is pretty uh pretty straightforward this one right here when the verbs finish in dog in s x sh ch and also the vowel Oh, we must I think I should add also the vowel O here in we are conjugating these verbs with the subject she he or it we must add to all of those verbs the ending ES when we want to conjugate them in a simple present an example is she she uh, washes. She washes the table. She washes the table, the tablecloth. She washes the tablecloth, right? So um, here we're using es because the verb finishes in sh. Likewise with the rest of the verbs. I'm gonna use another example. He go here we have the vowel o with the vowel o we also add es to conjugate it he goes to the church every sunday he goes to the church or he goes to church we can also omit the article sorry about that so he i'm going to type it again he goes to to church he goes to church every Sunday. He goes to church every Sunday. That's a repeated action. That's a habit. Therefore, we use the simple present tense. So these are the rules that we must apply when we are making or writing affirmative Affirmative sentences, sentences, affirmative sentences, right? Affirmative sentences when we, um, when we're making affirmative sentences, we use these rules over here. We use all of them. So be mindful about that. We only use these rules 
in affirmative. In negative, now, in negative, we must use the, let's go to the negative here, negative. With the negative, we use do not, or we use does not, or the contraction. The contraction of don't, or do not, do not, is uh, don't and the contraction of does not is doesn't those are the contraction when do we use doesn't and when do we use don't don't is used with the subjects um, I you we and they but doesn't is used with she, he, and it. So she doesn't play tennis. Uh, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna write an affirmative one. He cries. No, he cries. No, he he tries. He tries to study. He tries to study hard. He tries to study hard. Eh. Now, the negative of he tries to study hard would be he doesn't, he doesn't try to study hard. He doesn't try to study hard. And be, please pay attention to what happened here. Over here, the verb is conjugated. But when we use the negative, which is this one, the verb is not conjugated so if we go to the rule over here the verb is conjugated when we are making affirmative sentences but when we are writing negative sentences the verb should go back to its original stage or to uh, to its former shape or I would call it to the infinitive right he doesn't try to study her so that's that's how we make the negative we don't have to worry about the negative with i you we they because the verb doesn't change with them but we must be mindful or careful about when we are uh, making an affirmative statement and we want to change it into the negative and the same is true when we want or when we are asking a question here in questions in questions we use do with I you he she, uh, he sorry with I you we and they but we use does with she he and it so if I ask a question for example um, What does she, what does she need? What does she need to to cook today? What does she need to cook today? Or what ingredients does she need to cook today? So here the the um, here we use does. And the verb doesn't have any anything. The verb is just um, in its a simple in its simple form. It doesn't have any s. It doesn't have anything added to the verb because we are using does. And in questions and in negative, the verb does not change. Here it was a negative sentence the verb didn't change and the same is applicable or true with questions so this is uh, basically the summary of the simple present we must pay attention we must be mindful when we are making negative because we must use does with he she or it and the verb does not change the verb uh, stays you know in its original or in its simple way but uh, in affirmative yes the verb needs to change here when do we add a 
When do we add s to the verb? Cuando añadimos s al verbo? Well, cuando los verbos no terminan en estas consonantes que están aquí, ni en la regla de la i griega. Right? Después de todos esos verbos, ya sabemos, uno, you know, the common sense tells, tells us that if, we don't, if, if the verb we are using does not finish um, with these uh, consonants or vowels, like in these cases, then we must add S to the verb. I think this is the, uh, the video of the grammatical structure that we are going to be using today. And remember, the simple present is used with habits, with repeated actions, with facts or general truth, something that is 100%, 100% true. Yes, yeah, so, uh, and the, ver the simple present has three, three uh, I would call it shapes, the affirmative, the negative, and the interrogative. So here, uh, you have a summarized um, table in which you can refer to, uh, but uh, here you have the rules as well. These rules are really important. Um, to to improve uh, your understanding of the simple present, especially in affirmative. This is applicable only in affirmatives. These rules are only for this part of the table. These rules are only for this part of the table. We don't use any S or ES when we are making negatives only uh, we use doesn't when we use he she or it and we use don't with i you we and they i hope this um, short video clarify your doubts in regards to the simple present uh, and if you have any question about it please let me know today in our class we're going to be talking about clothing and I have developed two speaking activities and we're gonna visit the final interview the aspects that I'm gonna be taking into account and the time that you must be speaking uh, in each section right see you soon and have a wonderful day